Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to our honourable guest, Mr. Azmil bin Datuk Malik Kram and fellow students. Uh, before we begin, <coughs> let me briefly introduce our invited speaker for this industrial visiting lecture session. Uh, Mr. Azmil, our invited speaker, is currently an asset manager for Synergy C number Hub. Is responsible in managing all nine biogas plants across two countries worth around 150 million. He also focuses on uh, risk management, cost control, and meeting revenue, revenue target for company wide biogas power plants assets. And his forte is in technical and commercial development of sustainable energy solutions across all platforms. I'm sure we will learn a lot from this session. And I do hope that all students can use this opportunity to ask Mr. Azmil any questions that you may have. And again, please be reminded that contents covered in this lecture might come out in your assessment. So without further ado, I invite Mr. Azmil to give his lecture. So please, the floor is yours, Mr. Azmil. Hello. Good, Good morning. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I believe uh, you all can see me clearly. Uh, I'm at my home. I'm, I'm, I'm in my house. So I decided to take leave uh, to, to give a talk to you guys. So I hope that you have, uh, all of you have uh, had your breakfast already. So because it's going to be like a couple of hours, if I'm not mistaken. So my talk is... I am going to share with you Skajab. So there'll be a mixture of, uh, 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 there'll be a bit of Basa Malaysia over here, but for me is uh, most of my talk will be done in English. So no worries about that. So whoever or whatsoever have any questions or do not understand, please uh, you may ask me, you may, uh, you, may, you may ask me if you don't understand. Okay, I believe everyone can see what I am presenting right now. All right. So what uh, actually uh, I am planning to uh, share with you all is going to be a very uh, casual sharing session. Uh, is about Tomo 2 Dynamics, a little bit. Uh, the details you can ask your lecturer, lah, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you what is the principles and concepts of thermodynamics too, uh, touching a little bit into your textbooks and then uh, try and apply it into uh, industrial applications. So I'll share. Uh, Anas, uh, basically, you can yeah. see my presentation, can Yep, yep, very clear. Uh, is it possible for you to just make it a full screen presentation, Mr. Azmir? Uh, it's already the full screen, dah. So Are you using full screens right now? So, uh, Kitorang, uh, I'm seeing what I'm seeing right now is just the 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 big the backbone of the PowerPoint, not the full screen. Oh, okay. Wait up. Uh, okay, most probably another way. Oh, yeah, screen. Sharing the whole screen. Okay. Is this all right? Yep. Okay. Much better. Thank you, Mr. Azmir. Yes. All right. So I am a little bit background of me, myself. Uh, Dr. Anas actually have uh, uh, done some brief uh, introduction about myself, but uh, no worries. We can go around another way. Um, I am, that's me, I am basically 36 years old, I am married uh, just recently, I am very much a career person, that's why I got married pretty late, <laughs> and then uh, I am from Malay College Kuala Kangsa, and I graduated from Uni 10, uh, basically in Bachelor's of Mechanical Engineering, so you guys and I are somewhat relatable lah. So, um, as you can see, the first two lines here, it shows that I am full on a homegrown product. So, don't 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 think yourself. Uh, oh, if you want, uh, 
later on in life, uh, when you start working, people do this. It's like, oh, where are you from? You're from Unimap. Oh, actually, um, uh, some companies will do this, but you, you have to shut them down. But basically, it's like they, they are sometimes their preference is, or we prefer uh, overseas students, we prefer to uh, have uh, students from such and such universities. You, you can tell them, you can prove them wrong uh, with your work ethics, with your disciplines and with your performance. Dr. Anas over here is a product of US. So yeah, uh, I am a product of Malaysia. So you guys look on, you can see <laughs> which one is actually the uh, your preference would be. But for me is, um, Later on, I'll talk to you a little bit more that on, on this one is actually it's not about how where you are you are from uh, is actually how you were mo you are molded uh, and then also uh, how you bring yourself later. And it's not about the laureates that you actually gained uh, in the past. It's actually what you have you are currently doing and uh, the 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 outlook that you in you have in your mind and in your goals. So the third line says here, it took me six months to land a job, actually. Uh, previously, I was doing some, you know, some, you know, I just graduated, couldn't land a job. There was the peak oil and then the peak oil dropped. And then, uh, so yeah, I wanted to go into the oil and gas sector, but uh, Rizuki brought me into the power and uh, energy sector, which is something that I will be very, very much blessed because now it, the focus is this industry. And then um, that took me a couple of years in center of renewable energy. And then I became, uh, I moved to uh, IFMI Consultants as an m &E consultant, mechanical and electrical. So what I do is I design mechanical and electrical uh, installations for practically almost every single thing. Uh, sometimes go into very specific uh industries like power plants uh, refineries hospitals hotels uh it's not easy to actually design a hotel uh pipings and whatnot same goes for hospitals uh, and then i focus on thermal power plants uh i love it i like it later on i will show you a couple of uh, uh pictures and also videos on uh how much i love my job a basically thermal power plants why because i see fire i'm a little bit of a pyromaniac uh, it doesn't show uh, it doesn't it's a little bit of a contradictory statement because uh, towards the most bottom uh, uh, statement is i have a pension for sustainability and the environment so sometimes fire me you burn stuff and then uh, you are uh, you more concerned about the environment somehow it's like it'd be ironic lah. so Right now, I am in Synergy. Uh, started off as a business development manager, and then now I am an asset manager handling, managing 11 and counting uh, biogas power plants all over Malaysia and one in Indonesia. Okay, right now, 11, and most probably in another couple of years, it will grow up to 17. Uh, apart from that, Synergy is also a renewable energy company, uh, subsidiary of our sovereign wealth fund. Uh, it's a private limited company. And then um, we have, other than biogas, we have solar, we have energy efficiencies, and we do go into sustainability and also other renewable energy initiatives. So yes, basically that is about me. Um, thermodynamics, uh, we'll jump straight to the, the, the whole lot. So a little bit of recap. Uh, Dr. Anas, you may, uh, uh, I'll correct me if I do uh, any mistakes. So because I have, even though um, I have uh, I've been blessed to apply thermodynamics to all of my uh, jobs and throughout my career of 12 years, uh, there are times that I just, sometimes I forget stuff or I got, you know, uh, mistaken or uh, confused or mixed up with a few things. So, uh, first law of the dynamics is basically is about energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but however it can be converted from potential energy to mechanical, mechanical to kinetic. Hey, wait, make this mechanical uh, potential to kinetic, and then there's uh, noise, there's light, and then also at the end of the day is there's heat. 
So we go on to the next topic, which is something that you might be, I would say, later on when you learn in the in the subject, you will be having quite a trouble over there to understand. But I, I to be to be honest, I have, which is uh, this thing called exergy. Uh, we'll talk about it later. So the first law of thermodynamics is everything. In, you you just transfer one energy uh, in, from one medium to another. So uh, how it relates to my work, basically, I I by understanding the concepts and the principles of thermodynamics, I can actually understand the how how this equipment, the machines, the power plants uh, work, and how it should work, um, and identify uh, potential areas for improvements uh, and potential areas for any leakages, I would say, uh, leak, uh, energy leaks and increasing its efficiency and whatnot. So, yeah, second law of the modern is basically entropy. Um, this you'll be uh, learning it a little bit more later, whereby it is like the amount of energy that you need to move something. To move, uh, basically, when you heat up water, you boil up, but up to a certain time, the temperature will just maintain it for like a couple of minutes, like that, depending on how much, uh, how, how big the fire you put it. Uh, it will maintain it a certain time before it starts to boil. So that is called entropy. Uh, because on an atomic level, it has this binding, uh, uh, how, how to say, binding energy between uh, each molecules. So you want to break it. Uh, you have to put energy to it. So you can't move to another state if you don't break it. So the same goes for your life. Um, if you want to uh, change or move on or something like that, you have to sometimes unbind. So in this case, uh, sometimes in a relationship or, or in the relation of uh, your life, it's like unbinding with or unlearning uh, with uh, the things that you have. So yeah, so that's entropy for you guys, 101. And then basically uh, this entropy thing for all of the molecules and for one particular state, it will still always be there until you move on to another state and then if you stop applying energy into that then it'll go back so the thing is about um how to say yeah uh, the thing about uh, mass i would say mass and whatnot and the thing about the environment the how how things work is actually people just uh, this these things i would say Molecules are actually, they just like to sit in one place. They're very comfortable in one place. They're very comfortable, uh, relaxed. They don't want to move. So hence, um, uh, sometimes if you want to make them move or excite them, you have to put in energy. So, uh, so the same goes for, uh, for yourselves. If you want uh, to make progress, you have to put in the effort and whatnot. So yeah. So can you relate? I hope do you guys can relate. Of course, I uh, disclaimer over here. A lot of things over here you will not understand now. Yes, but you will further understand later on when you uh, go through with uh, lectures with Dr. Anas and also whatnot. But I am here to uh, teach you on the concepts of uh, all of this thermodynamics too. All right. So, like the title says, exergy, a very pending story, it's a very, it's, it's a very confusing, uh, I would say, uh, it's a complex, confusing, interesting uh, situation, a uh, uh, concept, whereby uh, I would say is actually about energy quality. So you have all sorts of energy that I mentioned about just now. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's eight. Uh, whereby the, the, there is a hierarchy of energy, apparently. Um, so, the best or the useful, one of those good quality or high quality um, uh, energy forms is actually, for example, like uh, potential energy, uh, kinetic, 
and something that moves. For us, is we we qualify it. We 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 qualify all these energies because um. Uh, for example, the easiest uh, energy for you to create is actually heat and sound. Is sound an energy? No, sorry. Uh, it's heat. And how do you create heat is actually just by rubbing. So you create an abrasion uh, between two surfaces or two mediums. And then from there on, actually, uh, there'll be energy I won't say create. There will be energy, heat energy generated. So how uh, heat is actually um, generated is a little bit more complex. Lah. There's a bit of uh, go on to the molecular level. So basically, um, when you uh, be in contact with two mediums, uh, some of the uh, molecular particles actually detach from its uh, main body so from there on is actually it releases a certain form of energy from there actually uh, it generates heat so heat energy i would say that uh, in industrial application it is somewhat um, almost useless lah. but for us it, it's it's actually um it's a headache uh, it is uh, is a challenge. You can say it's almost useless, but we still find ways to actually to make it um, useful. Um, in this situation where I will talk about uh, the power cycles later on, a heat where heat it will be actually be the uh, the main contributor for all this. Um, uh, how to say? Uh, power cycles so in industrial application we use heat on almost everything uh, the easiest one is actually um, power plants thermal power plants or your car engine for you to actually move it you have to combust a fuel so you create uh, heat from there and then from there there will be like a set of or a, a, a complex links of uh, chemical uh, equation, chemical, uh, how to say, um, uh, reaction, I'll say, yeah. And then from there on, it combusts, it generates heat, and then from the heat generation, it somehow you can actually move the mechanical items and then after that from those mechanical items you can be uh, you can find actually useful energy for you to actually use that uh, for you to move for in this case um, which I'll go later on one of my my favorite uh, power cycles is the Rankin cycle um, whereby uh, heat is put in uh, heat is actually put in in a body in this case is a boiler and then from there on heat is transferred through the medium and then goes into uh, uh, an expander in this case i in this uh, industrial application we call it the turbine steam turbine and then uh, the heat and from the steam and whatsoever it somehow converted to become potential energy and later on pushes the steam turbine to become uh, kinetic energy and later on uh, it moves the shafts to generate the uh, to, 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 to rotate the alternator and then the alternator generates um, electricity and there you go you get electrical power so yeah so as you can see over here exergy uh, like I said, it's the highest level of exergy and heat energy has the lowest amount of exergy. However, you can actually uh, reverse it. But then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, exergy will then later on increase. So, um, by the time exergy uh, reaches zero in a reservoir state, you can say that basically energy that is stored inside there uh, has no more 
uh, potential you have to like uh, that that thing will reach equilibrium like i said the molecular activities actually will start to stop so even if let's say i i got a tank and i put heat in and then it starts to move about and whatnot and after a while it just settle down so um how does uh, energy be like loss loss in this case um in this situation the tank actually expand okay it might not be a rigid tank let's not go with this situation and then there'll be some form of uh, energy transferring out and whatnot but however for it to reach equilibrium uh, all this energy have to settle down nicely and be at the same level as uh, a different medium or particles so after a while it reaches equilibrium, it'll be fine, it'll be comfortable, and there'll be no more potential. So it's like it's like you guys uh, when you have um, you guys are all fired up, you go through the day, and then uh, you go to workout, you go to class, you 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 go and uh, move about and whatnot, and then throughout the uh, the day, your your you get tired and whatnot after a while um you will go back home and then you start to rest and when you start to rest everything will just drain down and uh, you'll be you feel comfortable and then later on you you will just okay i don't think i want to move out from my bed right now so that is something like that so for you to move up from your bed up to a point there might be a need of an external push so, uh, external push can be just as simple as a alarm clock or you just uh, you just realize that you're late for class so that's the external push over there so yeah so the that's where the last point how do you convert low quality energy to high quality energy so you have to move, put more effort so you realize that actually uh, this is where uh, efficiency comes into play lah. so uh, efficiency uh, the most is one and the least is zero uh, whereby you will never reach either one or zero okay so more effort is needed this is where efficiency comes into play whereby in my case uh, the power plant system you have to heat up the the boiler first to heat up the steam and whatnot you need to put in fuel and the fuel has a certain amount of uh, uh, chemical energy inside there so the more power or uh, the, the bigger the thing is you have to put more stuff of course um we engineers we um we tend to be uh, not satisfied with our results and what we do is we want to achieve more uh, we say that oh this power plant is already perfect it's running by clockwork then we realize that actually there's uh, there are bits and pieces uh, here and there that need requires tinkering for it to improve further uh, later on in life that uh, as you start working as an engineers you will realize this um, uh, we just like similarly to artists when you start working on something uh, if you're not satisfied with it you all go on and on and on improving it same goes for uh, engineers uh, inventors it's a human desire that we want to achieve more so yeah so a little bit of life over there so it's uh, related to thermodynamics. Uh, basically, the, how the Big Bang Theory works is it's related to all the uh, first law, second law, and also the exergy thing. So it's one of our applications. Uh, energy started, uh, the, 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 the universe started off as one single uh, particle, one single very dense uh, molecule, I would say then because the amount of energy that he has he just decided to explode and then he expands and then he kept on expanding and then um because uh, because okay uh <laughs> i okay. can hear myself over there i can hear myself yeah okay anyhow uh so 
the universe expands and you keep on expanding and along in between the universe created certain certain things along the way which is you can see galaxies stars or planet whatnot and then with it all this uh um the things that uh, we see over here on earth so you keep on expanding and expanding and expanding until it reaches equilibrium once it reaches equilibrium whereby everything is already there then the universe's integrity will no longer be able to actually hold itself and it starts to crumble um it somehow relates to if you go and uh, uh how to say if you go and google up or uh, look into youtube uh the the how to say the not time lapse the slow motion uh, video of explosions it's just one small tiny spot the easiest one you can have a look at the atomic bomb Kapika. just one tiny spot a bomb it just and it starts to explode it's just so huge it creates a lot of uh, it, 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 no it uh, produces it generates a, a high amount of energy uh, heat energy and through its uh, chemical reactions it expands and expands and expands until at one time it reaches peak expansion and it'll just compresses and go back because at the center it uh, it is just uh, the expansion has gone too much until it reaches equilibrium peak and then over here at the center is just vacuum it's nothing and it goes back in yeah so similar to the universe so it's just one big explosion and we are all in the explosion we are all part of the reaction yeah any questions so far regarding this uh difficult topic that i am trying to explain to you guys so that you guys understand later on <laughs> No, no, right. Okay, okay. So the power cycles. Uh, it's a uh, quite an interesting uh, topic. Later on, you uh, you learn in the I think the second half of uh, this uh, semester, lah. I think because you that's what. This, Mr. Azmi, so it will be a good refreshment for all students. Oh, yeah. Go. All right. Yeah. Good. Okay, so. A Carnot cycle, later on you'll go on with the Sterling, Rankin, Brayton, Joel cycle and the Otto cycle. Uh, there'll be more cycles over there, but uh, this is what I, I would like to actually um, focus on or uh, put in the whatnot uh, relate to the industry application. Um, so you what you can see here is just four cycles, uh, it's just four processes, pretty simple. But in the world, uh, I don't know, uh, human beings like to make things complex, I guess. <laughs> or it's just that there's no, this is an ideal application. So um, um, this is an ideal application. So basically, uh, in real life condition, it won't be like this. It will be like not even, uh, uh, you, you find it even that it looks like a circle. Yeah, seriously. Um, so uh, there'll be like ups and downs, dips and peaks, and yeah, uh, because like I said, we engineers tend to actually like to improve ourselves. Then we realize that I think we can tinker around with this power cycle. Let's play along with it. Let's play around. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about the concept. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, okay, this is a critical point, this is where the heat goes out and whatnot. No. You guys have a look. You guys can learn that one. What I'm going to say is, ranking cycle is um, what something that I like, uh, that I always touch on, is actually because I deal with a lot of power plants. Uh, it is a type of external combustion uh, instrument. Whereby external means the mechanical part is not uh, the, 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 the heat transfer part, whereby the Q in over here, 
is not actually uh, part of the mechanical part or the moving part. So as you can see here. So the boiler over here, we put in, so we just heat it up um, by means of a lot of ways. Uh, because in power plants, later on, you will have an elective subject, if I'm not mistaken, that power generation. So if you want to learn about power plants, take power generation, take uh, combustion, and also take turbo machinery. And if you can, take, um, uh, if you want to go on to another lab, advanced level, is uh, CFD. Lah. So those are very, very good good elective subjects where you can actually, uh, when you can't, you want to talk about, you want to land a job in, uh, in the engineering industry, those are the subjects you might want to have a look and take, especially if you want to go into the, 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 the industry that gives out all the, the good, good cash, you will say, oil and gas. Uh, power generation industry does not, is, is not that, I will say, uh, profitable lah, the kurang sikit. This is a bit okay. Experience and the reward, the, the working reward is there, but um, financial reward is something is, uh, can be more desired, but it's competitive. Okay. So ranking cycle uh, is applied to almost all, all of our uh, coal thermal power plants. Okay. We have gas and oil power, uh, power plants, but we prefer to use coal because of various reasons. One of it is it being cheap. So yes, uh, in Malaysia, you can have a look. Um, national energy policy, is it? no, wrong. Uh, but you can uh, you can look up the uh, energy mix in Malaysia. There's a lot of sources. Uh, Wikipedia is also good, uh, but you can go into IRENA or IEA or even um, Suranjaya Tanaga. You can have a look. Suranjaya Tanaga is actually an energy commission whereby it's uh, under the uh, energy ministry. It basically handles all of the uh, power, power industry. Oil and gas is different. Okay. So, yeah. So why coal power plants? Because it's cheap. So what we do is we chuck in coal over here. Um, there's a lot of, uh, how to say, um, uh, methods to do that. And one of the best uh, method is actually to, to pulverize or to grind this uh, coal because coals are actually big. Can be as big as this, can be as small as this. We grind it to be softer than baking powder. As you can see if you sift out baking powder or flour, it will be very, very soft. You can't even, uh, if you uh, pick it up, it'll just fall off, right? It, it, it'll be like, uh, how to say, it'll be very, very soft. You don't feel anything, right? Uh, pulverized coal is like water. Yeah, that's how very microscopic level of uh, it being grinded. So you just move on like water and be uh, injected, I would say, through a burner, which is as big as me. It's like 1.5 to 2 meters the nozzle. And then you go into the boiler and then uh, it'll burn out. And then it'll create heat. The heat is then transferred through uh, a selection of uh, heat exchangers, the superheater, the reheater. Uh, and then this, and then uh, heat exchanger actually inside it is actually water converted to steam, all the way up to super, uh, to um, superheated steam. Because reasons why later on I'll talk, tell you about. Then we will go and move the turbine, and the turbine moves the the generator, and the generator produce uh, generates electricity. And uh, you have to cool it off. Yeah, condenser. Over here, of course, in real life application, there's not be like something like this. So boiler, you heat it up. Along the way, you will lose and uh, you you will uh, lose energy due to leakages. And uh, over here is where the steam actually uh, moves the turbine. Over here, most of the energy is uh, spent here. So once it has gone out from the turbine, we don't want that 
energy anymore. We want to reduce it down as slow as we can so that we can go and make the cycle back again. So the, the, the lower this thing can do, so that means the, there's a better range and that means uh, higher, uh, higher output. Okay. Coal power plants or a lot of power plants nowadays, uh, their efficiency has gone like more than 50%. Sometimes it can go up to 60%, 70%. 70% not yet, I guess. But I tell you, basically, um, at certain points, uh, they have gone with um, technologies for uh, supercritical boilers or ultra supercritical boilers whereby um, the the heat generated uh, inside the boiler can go up to the temperature i mean produced inside the boiler can go up to 1500 1600 degrees celsius whereby a critical boiler is usually around 1004 1006 so 1000 for them this ultra supercritical is 1006 and above I've seen one, uh, there's one in Malaysia, there's actually a few in Malaysia, a uh, couple of them in Perak and one in Johor, south of Johor, down in Pontian. And then there's one nearby us, which is uh, in uh, Negeri Sembilan. Um, the, the, the boilers are actually very, very, very efficient. So you, it's like, um, for us, it's like, for, uh, for basic understandings, it's, it's like, breaking the laws of thermodynamics it's like you, you just can't figure out it's like how do you just how do you break that, that that cycle you go all the way up or how do you do that it's like so yeah so you see this critical point over here the the boilers can actually perform way above so yeah go figure lah. so that's power plant boilers i like power plants because it's huge mm, i like whole thermal power plants because it has fire inside it Later on, I show it to you. So yeah, so we engineers we tend to find efficiency. We would like to utilize all the energy that we can get, harness it, so we don't like wasting it. So um, so there is a regenerative ranking cycle. So this is one of the actually a very good simple example where there's only one heat regeneration. In the coal power plant that I've been to in Malaysia. The standard turbines over here, it can go up to seven times of regeneration. Goes uh, from one, uh, there, there's one, uh, there's a few feed water heaters, and then later on, uh, to, to, towards the end, it'll just be a, through a condenser, and then it'll just uh, go through the cycle. But however, uh, there's a lot of stages inside the turbine. And firstly is the high pressure area and then medium pressure and then the end is the low pressure uh, uh, section. So you learn that a lot more later. So in this case, if let's say you can see one, two, three, four, five, uh, this particular section you have you can see four. And then the fifth one is actually just a drop and it goes back up. So yeah, it's um is a lot more complex than just this. So it's quite interesting and uh, it's actually quite, apparently this is our old technologies, like 50 years old, 60 years old. And we are like, how do these people in the back in that age, during the 1940s also, you can figure this one out. So yeah. So we go on to the next one, which is the Brayton Joule cycle, which is uh, what, we deal with power plants as well, or in this case, uh, jet engines. Um, a little bit complex over here. So it goes through, um, uh, the fuel goes through, it's actually a pretty simple one. It's a very simple and fast process. There's intake, compression, combustion, and then after that, it creates a jet engine. Okay, the same thing that you see on, um, uh jet engines the uh, the planes that you i mean the commercial planes you see you see the ones the big uh cylinder thing below the wing the the engines the jet engines 
if you take out all of the how to say uh, uh out of the cosmetics lah the housing and whatnot you see the same exact thing in a power plant yeah so you can see what you realize is actually the the um uh, the planes, the jet engines are actually the same exact thing on the power plant. And do, these things, uh, these gas turbines, I call it GTs, are not light. They are very heavy. Um, for example, like the ones that power up the 737 or something like that, I think is as easy as like one. Um, at least five times. It can go more than that. So, yeah. So imagine the wings that you have and then you have a big round thing at the bottom and then that wing juts out and then the amount of stress that he has it has uh, firstly is the weight that he has to uh, take care of it imagine you you holding up uh, you holding out your arm like this and then you hold something after a moment you feel very very strained over here in, on your shoulders kind so that is the amount of strain that these planes have. So imagine uh, you're flying on a plane and you start to think uh, uh, in uh, engineering ways, you realize that when will this actually break? <laughs> because I tell you, it's like sometimes terrifying if you think too much about it. So it moves up and down due to the uh, lift and drag and whatnot. So yeah. So that's the Brayton Joe cycle. Gas turbines, very efficient, uh, very com uh, compact, so it, and very easy to do. And it is very easy to run. For example, coal power plants, for you to start up, for you to start generating electricity from the heat that it, uh, uh, from the steam turbines, um, it'll take like at least a day, sometimes two days if it's from start, from, from, uh, ambient temperature condition. Whereas for gas turbines, this is the, this is the open, uh, this is the, whereby the housing the, is actually, the top part of it is actually moved out for it to do some uh, maintenance. But for gas turbines, it's just like turning on the car. Just um, what you do is basically, yeah, you push a button and then there you go, it starts. Within just like that, and that's straight away you generate electricity. Yeah. However, uh, it is situated in things like this. It has a lot of pipes and whatnot, and then yeah. Uh, this is something like a more undesirable to look into, but uh, most of our uh, power plants are actually covered power plants due to the environmental conditions that we live in. We are a tropical climate country rain makes this thing corrode so we cover it up lah so yeah this is the um how to say the um, powerhouse i would say uh so this is the powerhouse it's quite big um whereby inside it is actually the the whole gas turbine it is something similar to um, steam turbines, the look of it, but actually uh, this is a gas turbine. What it has is, uh, if let's say you need to maintain this gas turbine uh, up, to, up to a certain amount of hours, if after it runs, you have to maintain it. So what you do is you don't send it to a workshop. People go to, to this piece of thing because um, uh, as you can see, it's not that big over here. Uh, this square over here, if you realize, if you see it, this square over here is is where a person stands and it's just uh, not, not, yeah, a person is not that big over here. It's just one person over here. And then, uh, so yeah, so imagine the weight that you have to carry if you want to bring it out. So what they do is they open the top casing and then after that, uh, they'll start dismantle a few things. And then you can take the shaft out, but you cannot uh, transport it out. So what you do is you lift it up. There's a crane over here. It's a double girdle crane. It's like this. And then moves uh, throughout the whole hall. So what it lifts up 
uh, what it does, it lifts up, it puts to the side uh, on the proper casing. That's where you do the main, uh, maintenance for it. Uh, you do the rotation, you do the balancing, you do the alignment. Uh, there's quite, uh, it's a specialist job. Uh, one of my friends who graduated from Uni 10 as well, uh, she's a specialist now. And uh, she, she is a very committed engineer. Um, I would say that she has been with uh, TNB uh, throughout her whole career until recently that she moved to, um, she was uh, handpicked because of her specialty. She was handpicked by a uh, subsidiary of General Electric to do um, maintenance of all these rotational uh, things. So, uh, so it, and then she is a very well-versed professional engineer. There's an IR in front of her, her name, and she's an ASEAN IR. So there's very few women. So for her to be in that, uh, uh, in this field, where not many people actually, uh, uh, ladies actually uh, go to, because um, I don't know, uh, for me, it is a, a, a good, industry to be in and for her to shine and then for her to actually focus on uh, this thing it's like re really respects her that's women empowerment for you guys for all the ladies who wants uh, who pursues engineering focus on this and you will be rewarded yeah she's married with two kids and uh, two cats and then she plays futsal so yeah and an engineer is an engineer so your characters will be, you know, like you guys, you, you know your characters very well. You bring it all, all, along when you start working and stay there. So no worries. So uh, we're just a little bit crazy here and there. So there you go. No worries. If you see a, a very senior engineer, like 20, 10, 20 years senior than you, like Dr. Anas or me, we're just as crazy as you guys are. So don't worry. And we're just uh, sometimes at, at a certain point, it's just as stupid as you guys are. Lah. Yeah. Maybe okay. Not Mr. But Mr. Azmir, lah. not anymore. Lah. <laughs> yeah, what, what? Uh, maybe not as crazy as we were 20, uh, 20 or 25 years ago. Lah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, spelling cycle is something that you guys actually apply on. Uh, you guys love, uh, especially the boys. Um, because it's two stroke. Two stroke uh, is very known for a lot of applications. It is very high powered, uh, but not an efficient cycle. But you get the results there and then. Well, so those who have motorcycles, you know lah, two stroke. So what is it? So uh, we have normally we have engines, we have four strokes, and we have two strokes. Uh, for those who want performance, usually go with two strokes, right? So. Uh, there's a few other applications of two strokes. Um, air compressors. That's an LC over there uh, on the left. And also two strokes can go with like a, a lot of other simple moto application. A simple, uh, the simple gen set that you see at the the pasar malam. Uh, the 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 lawn mower. Small small engine, small small motors. They, they apply two stroke uh, uh, concept because um, the, in terms of efficiency is not much difference uh, when it comes to uh, having four stroke and two stroke for small small uh, motors like this. So they want output. They need output. So what they do is they just and it's a very simplistic design. Uh, doesn't require all the uh, very uh, how to say uh, high tech state of the art. Um, technology now is more of a very mechanical, very simple, you just need a, a con rod, a shaft, and a rotating, uh, and, 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 a, and a, a spindle and whatnot. So you, you can straight away generate uh, the, the output that you want. It's very responsive because it's two stroke, it's very responsive. It, it, I would say it's light. So you throttle it straight away, zoom, goes up. So yeah. So that is needed for small, small output motors and engines. Uh, because the reason being is if, uh, if uh, you need the power to move that, that load that you have, 
So if you do not create the enough power, it, it starts stalling and then it just die off. So that's the thing about two strokes. Uh, the torque it generates not much compared to four strokes. So yeah. Uh, and it's loud. It's loud. Yeah. So the next one is uh, one thing about I I like about the Germans. They like efficiencies. So this auto guy is actually a inventor. Is he's German, and they all love efficiency. You should go you, one day if you have the chance. You guys should go to Germany. Uh, it's all about efficiency over there. They they don't waste energy. They they, they really work with the time. And apparently, uh, it fits on with everything. It's not you in a rush. Uh, you do things on a timely basis, but it works like clockwork. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Like for example, like mm, I would like to share my experience in Germany when I was in Germany when I studied. Uh, I went for I I won a competition back in two thousand six. Uh, I got to go to Germany for a study trip for a week. You know how efficient they are. They put uh, an analog clock. You know the analog clock, the the clock with the the needles, yeah. And then they put a display saying that the next train will come at uh one zero two p.m. And at exactly one zero two p.m. the clock struck there, uh, the, the the second needle struck at the top. And it says one zero two, the train comes. It's not like one zero two like few seconds now. It's like one zero two on the dot train comes. And then it'll be there like for uh for like half a minute or one minute, and then there you go. And I was like, I was impressed. It's like not by this, uh, it goes down to the second. So that's how how um how efficient these Germans are. And being that this guy created the auto cycle, which is a high efficiency for stroke engines. That's where you that's what you see in almost every single uh cars that you look into lah. except if it's an ev electric vehicle and it's a different story but yes uh apparently the, the this one um the the highest efficient engine i would say for stroke engine is actually a diesel engine uh, and it is actually not a petrol engine or a gas engine uh if i'm not mistaken the diesel engine uh produces because the heat rate of uh oil petrol uh diesel i would say diesel is not much compared to petrol in terms of the uh, energy density but the amount of power harnessed from uh the diesel engine uh, is very very good that it creates the highest efficiency so uh but then but then sometimes you guys will realize that uh, but diesel engines are not actually as powerful in in like um powerful as you see like the pickups are not fast and a few things but they create very very high torque no idea how it works you have to learn the internal combustion engines there's a subject for that and then um so uh it's very efficient it's very good so diesel engines are very very efficient uh it, it creates a very high torque so for prime movers um prime movers meaning by uh, big trucks uh big gen sets those are called prime movers they use diesel mostly as the fuel yeah and then four stroke engines um this can it, although it is um it is not a turbine but it is still considered a rotating equipment because of this shaft over here so uh four strokes engines um is applied to where i am right now um uh as you see as you know that i am asset manager for biogas power plants so my biogas power plants the fuel goes into a gas engine not a gas turbine because um the flow is too low it's not efficient to use a gas turbine and gas turbines are expensive so it's better to use just a, a biogas engine so this is one of my engines that I have in, in, at my biogas power plant. So 
pretty simple inside here is an engine uh, is a v20 cylinder so there's 20 cylinder 10 on each side and it's v and it has two turbos hey no sorry one turbo only one turbo but one big one is as big as um is as big as uh, your tables, I would say. It's, it's huge. So the snail, you can see, is, is like a half a meter. So the amount of output that it can generate. Lah. So over here is uh, uh, the biogas engine. The en uh, this is the biogas pipeline. It goes into here, into the engine side here. Sorry, I didn't put in uh, pictures of the engine in this bare one. And then the air intake goes into here. This is the cooling system, and there's the exhaust. So inside here is where the four stroke thing works out. And then um, uh, straight away it generates electricity lah. It's quite an compressed thing. And this is a modular, so it's very cost effective. And um, yeah, so uh, four strokes it, it, it applies to almost everywhere we see whereby we see whenever we are on the road we see cars so that's basically for strokes uh, application over there yes so uh, we've touched on those things so in a way in a gist uh, i have presented somewhat uh, part of thermodynamic one and thermodynamics two so what now? Uh, what can you do? Right? What can you do? What sort of job that you can apply with thermodynamics? Uh, some of you guys will actually hate thermodynamics. Uh, after thermodynamics 1 and then you realize there's actually thermodynamics 2, yeah, you guys are cursing. It's like, oh man, we have to go through the, the torture again. Exactly the same words. Okay, I said that. I don't know about Dr. Anas over there. But for me, is I was like, no, I don't want to go through this again. Because I felt I felt the the, the looming hatred, and then and I was like, oh man, I don't want to fail. But Alhamdulillah, I got uh, I got pretty good rates, pretty good marks, uh, B plus if I'm mistaken. It's average, I would say yes, average. But okay, for thermodynamics two, the complexity of stuff, I got B plus, okay lah. And I still don't understand stuff then until I go on to my first job. Then I realize, hey, actually, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. So the question begs this one, I really need your attention here is do you, what type of job that you want to apply? The engineering, uh, no need for thermodynamics, lah, but engineering wise what type of job what sort of job that you can or you would like to apply and another question back to come to mind is are you sure it is what you want ah uh, yes okay so my my answer here is what can you do now is continue on learning because um right now even after 12 years uh of me in the industry being involved in power and being the know-how to say a lot of things i i realized that i know nuts uh, and a lot of uh, people out there are better than me and i say to myself it's like man i have to back up uh talk to experts yes experts can be whoever right industrial experts it can be me it can be a person in linkedin it can be a, a, a over someone in facebook uh, talk to experts and make sure that they're re they're the proper experts. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, my name over there is just my name. I did not put any uh, connotations, salutations, or uh, how to say uh, things of competency because I tell you I don't have much. <laughs> I am applying, so which I'm gonna talk about it later a little bit more. So you talk to experts. So make sure that they're competent, make sure that they know their stuff and then uh, cross check. There's a lot of experts. There's a lot of uh, uh, school of thoughts. 
you learn and then be an open book and uh, don't be biased on two things. So yeah. Continue on learning. Yeah. Uh, not just thermodynamics and everything in life. Uh, what sort of job? Power generation, the energy industry, which is oil and gas. Uh, process industry, which is related to chemicals. Uh, it's quite a lot in Malaysia, surprisingly. And uh, manufacturing, of course. Uh, but depends on what type of manufacturing lah. Um, uh, the yeah. But the more, the most. Uh, in, in my in my understanding, the most uh, job related to thermodynamics is actually power generation. You talk about this like practically every day. Yeah, you talk about the heat rate, you talk about the efficiency, and you talk about uh, making sure that everything is fine. There's no leakages. There's the the energy in the Q in equals the Q out. And we don't want a lot of Q uh, out along in between. We just want the Q out at the turbine. That Things like that. And the third question is, are you sure is this that is what you want? Uh, Relook into your life goals. Uh, you, you look into your uh, objectives in life. Uh, what do you want to be? Or what do you want to have? Uh, what do you intend to pursue on? And you balance it out. Whether uh, a, a career in this uh, suits you. I am uh, uh, half of my career years are mostly technical because I know for you to uh, be competent and for you to go into other things, you have to know the in and out of technicals uh, of how the thing works. So I put my hours in. I, I, I work late. Uh, I I uh, I I put in the nights. I would say, which I stay late in office, uh, just to actually learn and do extra work so that I can actually understand more about uh, the things I do. So then, the second half of my career, which is uh, the past six months, with uh, this past six years that I was with Synergy, a I would say that I use this technical prowess and experience and knowledge that I have. I apply it in a business sense. And then I tell you it's uh, it's very rewarding. Uh, because um, you are, when you know those things, you are actually valued. Valued not just by the company, but uh, by the community that you have. For example, in this case, I am valued that Dr. Anas actually reached out to me and said that, hey, can you uh help us actually uh present a topic on thermodynamics okay sure so free value so um uh once you are focus on your technicals be it thermodynamics or whatsoever uh or uh so later on you realize that okay you can go far further uh you can be a specialist or you can go into the management side of things and whereby you will actually um, understand the groundworks. Number one is because uh, so once you understand the groundworks, you know to move about and manage the team. And number two is you don't need, you won't be duped by the team. Yeah, and then um, uh, and then at the same time, um, you can see a better overview of things in a broader scale and then uh, able to uh, maneuver the, the business better. Yeah. However, the irony is uh, about the works over here, yeah, it's engineering, is you have three uh, circles. It's interrelated sometimes. Uh, it's a great job experience you get a good pay and a wonderful employer. Yeah, I just did this last night. Yeah? So sometimes it might be wrong. This is my opinion. Uh, this is my, based on my opinion and sometimes uh, my observation and experience in life throughout my career. Lah. So uh, throughout my whole career, I got great job experience and a wonderful employer. My, uh, my principal consultant at that time, 
he uh, they are good mentors they teach me everything whatever i want to do they they, they actually encourage me uh, they push me at the same time but then yeah this one so this also so it goes it, it, it goes with the it goes with the uh, i don't know uh, nature of business i believe uh, because it's consultancy company we go with efficiency and lean management so everything's not actually hoo-ha and uh, gung-ho so salary is mediocre you won't be able to uh, up to a certain point in life uh, especially this current uh, jobs uh, current world scenarios um, you just skim through by but tell you this one yes you get it yeah but make sure the right the right place lah if you get a great job experience and, uh, and a sake employer uh, you won't get any of these three so yeah you you have to choose you have to uh, see lah which one so however if you want to have a great job experience and good pay you have to put in the hours uh in this case is oil and gas uh basically there's almost no life for you uh you'll be thrown into the vast ocean i would say the vast wilderness whereby you'll be there for days and weeks sometimes months uh, a couple of my cousins are oil and gas engineers uh sometimes uh, it's project based but when the project is there they're there 48 days 65 days uh sometimes it goes beyond uh how to say um standard acceptable uh health and safety because health and safety sometimes doesn't apply on international waters <laughs> so there you go yeah so it's like as long as you can work you work and make sure the deliverables are met the out the desired output are met so yeah but yes, good pay, very good pay, very good pay. Good pay, wonderful employer. Uh, I've seen one, but uh, I can give a very broad opinion that it is not as desired lah. Yeah. Uh, there is good pay, wonderful employer, um, and all sorts of all these three, but uh, it's like a unicorn lah. Uh, it's not easy for you to get. You have to be very, uh, you have to be exceptionally well. Uh, you have to go around and out to see the world and to get this. It's like a jackpot. You hit the jackpot, you get it, and then everyone's fighting for that place. So. We, we so we try and reach out a balance over here lah. so so if you want to have a great job experience a good pay and wonderful employer not engineering it's a joke you can still get three with, by doing engineering it's how uh you see with the perspective in this sense lah. so yeah uh in this career in, as uh, my advice is uh think thoroughly uh, in being an engineer make sure that all the competencies uh, are there make sure once you graduated register with BEM Board of Engineers Malaysia just 50 bucks it's just uh, in a, a lifetime membership and then from there on you work your way become a competent professional engineer and if not there's a lot of other uh, ways to go about for example, uh, you can go into um, uh, Masters in Engineering Management, MEM, or you say, yeah, upper technical on the field is not my thing. And then, okay, no problem. You can go into uh, analysis, desktops, desktop analysis, uh, uh, the business side of engineering, you can go there, no worries. Uh, so you can focus on uh the financials of engineering and also on a few other things yeah so yeah so you choose find a balance and plan out 
and you plan out not just for the next couple of years how to get to how to land a job how to survive yes that you need to do that but uh, make a broad uh, medium long term punya uh, goals uh, objectives five years ten years twenty years you must some people might find it stupid mm, the closest person might find it stupid actually but uh, you do you and you stick to it and and i understand along the way in life uh sometimes you you tend to find actually your your objective once you reach there or, or along the way you reach there you find that the objective that you want is actually not what you want you work hard for it for a couple of years and you realize that you oh, know it's not my couple of thing it's okay uh no worries you can do the pivot and change uh, based on uh, you feel like uh, more suited to your people change along the way and then no worries uh, the goals and uh, objectives change along the way it's okay yeah so i would like to experience uh, share my experience previously sorry i didn't put any captions over here i can describe it um this is based on my experience as a consultant in uh, for a coal power plant. Yeah, uh, basically when I was in my previous job before Synergy, it's if me consultants. Um, basically, we are the we were the uh, consultant for TMB fuel. So whenever there's a new coal comes into a power plant, a coal power plant, they will call in and tell us hey come in test the coal please even though the coal has been tested up north in perak uh, the power plant down south in johor uh, never tried it before they require you to go and test it because power plants even though they look all the same they have this um, uh, the big ass uh, boiler everything technology is almost the same inside it you can't see it and whatnot actually it's different Okay, the dynamics, the design of the, I would say, go back to thermodynamics. Uh, the the design of the the power plant is based on the design fuel, and uh, sometimes you can't get the design fuel all the time because you know uh, there's a few things that you need to consider. One of it is price, so uh, you can go with a more cost-effective price. Uh, you use a, a a different quality coal fuel supply, but it's in within acceptable range, and then you have to go and test it. So this is what I do. So this is a, um, a coal yard, part of the coal yard. This is a picture of uh, actually this particular picture is for us to actually look into the gradient of this coal stack. Behind here is a big coal stack. Uh, uh, as you can see, this small dot over here is actually uh, at the excavator. So this coal stack is actually as high as 16 to 25 meters high. It's huge. Big, big, big stack. And then it's as long as, I don't know, as long as it can be, like 100 meters, 200 meters, depends. And then this machine over here is a stacker reclaimer. Uh, I'll show you a video later on. This is a... a, a so one of my uh, analysis as a coal consultant over here is actually to see the gradient of the stacking because um, you just throw the coal for using this machinery over here uh, and then you need to see the integrity of the coal being stacked so if it starts to slide that means it indicates the type of coal that you will get or and the performance, uh, the performance, the combustion performance that you will actually get when you go in the boiler. And yeah, this is basically a, a random picture of me uh, on one of the top floors, the high floors of a coal boiler. Uh, you won't see much over here, but it's actually a gantry for those who are uh, afraid of heights. I am afraid of heights. This is a quite of challenge because over there, the boiler is very, very loud. You have to wear uh, earplugs and then the boiler um, is because a lot of things, there's a lot of fire inside there and a lot of movement inside the boiler. It vibrates and it shakes. So 
this thing vibrate this thing yeah it doesn't shake as much but it vibrates and then there are certain certain areas the higher you go you the 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 shaking the vibration is more significant and this is me using a uh, um, not a welding uh, protection but uh, uh, it, this is one of the equipment that we use uh, to observe fire inside the boiler yeah one of my job is to look at fires that's why i love my job that time i love it still i love to do it uh, is to look into fires you pick at a hole and you go either you look down or you look up and then you see the the the, the flame how big it is uh, the shape of the flame where does it go to and then you look on the walls uh, if there is any residue or uh, we call it slag uh, coal the molten coal uh, is basically stuck on the wall and whatnot if it's then we can indicate lah. we can say this is our observation you have to do you have to do such and such to operate your power plant so those those are the advisories that we do so yeah uh, uh, these are actually two videos um, of my the, the the ones that I do so as you can see um, how much we relate to thermodynamics is uh, it does a lot but in a more broader scale uh, but over here is just just uh, basically this left videos this left uh, side the video is from the bottom of the boiler uh, this is at the uh, bottom ash hopper but this bottom ash hopper is already also at or bottom part is already is at level four so this um boilers actually the utt scale coal power plants is like um, 60 70 meters tall it is like a high-rise condo it's huge and inside here is actually pretty empty is a vessel is an empty uh, space whereby during operation it is filled up with fire so you can say that uh, the fire is as big as your house <laughs> literally yes. so i'm gonna uh, yes is there a question no okay so i'm gonna run this video so you focus on the top part. Okay, this is uh, uh, this is what we call a peep hole. Is uh, is just um, it's the size of an iPad. It's just as big as this. So it, it, sometimes it's smaller. So what you do is you open the peep hole, and you peep into it, uh, but. AC is not advisable to peep without any protection, hence this. You have to wear this or welding uh, welding mask. So uh, the ones you see over here that looks like a volcanic explosion, uh, the the like flying rocks is actually, uh, you would say the slag, the bottom ash, uh, the, the, yes, the bottom ash, the hard ash. Uh, so it drops into the, what you can see inside here is, uh, uh, is at the bottom ash pond whereby this very hot uh, slag goes into it it quenches and then it, it, it basically it breaks up so I run the video again and you focus on the top part As you can see here, uh, that's actually flame, flames, and uh, this is the bottom part of I would say the uh, the fireball. Yeah, the boilers they have this thing called the the, the combustion area whereby uh, they term they coin it the fireball. It has to be a big a fireball. So this fireball, um, I would say, is yes, as big as a house, and then the flame that shoots up from the side over here, it, uh, it's uh, as big as a house, as big as a bus. So yeah, 
imagine um, you open up your stove and then you have uh, one small flame, uh, one of the holes from the flame, you can see that uh, you, you try imagine it being very, very fast like jet fuel, but the size of a bus. That's the amount of energy that is being put inside here. So it's like tremendous. Um, and then, um, so as I would like to say that this uh, utility scale boilers, they're huge. So on the middle level, you can go on to like up to seven floors of just looking at fire. Seven floor, there's a level, um, level six until plus seven, 13, for example. You can see there's where all, all the nozzles are actually located. The fuel nozzles are located along with the air nozzles. So that's where you see the fire being injected. And I say inject is like, like high speed injection. And then it opens up uh, at 45 degrees. So, so it is quite an interesting uh, view. But sometimes it comes with the uh, hazards. One of it is very high temperature actually. So this is a peep hole. And then I want you to focus and see. Yeah. a couple of times uh, no okay so this is this is one of the peep holes at one of the top floors is at this area we call the superheater area whereby most of the heat exchanger happens go to the ranking cycle you know the heat exchange happens there uh, for it to be uh, transported uh, to generate steam and then goes to the to the steam turbine so for this one uh as you i'm gonna run it again so there's yes you can see this actually is a, a flame or flue gas shot out okay so basically uh to avoid any of this actually um uh coal i mean coal power plants or this coal boiler it must uh, be of negative pressure so whenever you open this uh, peep hole, actually uh, air will be sucked in. Uh, reason being for it being negative pressure is very simple. You don't want to make the boiler explode. Number two is you want the all the flue gas, the temp, the hot air, and the the the, the flame that you have uh, generated, the heat that you have uh, created, uh, generated. Uh, being uh, flown through the right parts of the boiler, whereby the heat exchanger superheater comes the region where uh, you exchange heat with uh, steam. <clears throat> so, uh, for this to be like there's, uh, there's a fire going out, basically it's at positive pressure. Positive pressure, not good. So it shows the indication that there must be some blockage inside where some of the places lah. So that, that's one of my jobs. So by understanding the concepts of uh, thermodynamics, understanding the concepts of um, mechanical process flows and whatnot, you can actually uh, somehow learn, you know, understand the characters of this is like, it's supposed to be, uh, air supposed to be coming into uh, this people instead, uh, flame goes out. So something is wrong somewhere. So yeah. So that's one of my job. Oh, uh, so we go on with the next one. This is the stacker reclaimer that I mentioned about, like uh, the previous one. Yeah, this one, this uh, this big, my, something like a bridge over here, but actually it's not a bridge. It's like a big crane. And then uh, it stacks and reclaims coal. So right now what it's doing is stacking the is reclaiming coal to be fed through a, a belt conveyor and it'll be fed directly into the coal pump. It's huge. It, it is uh, bigger than the normal size crane that you see um, in uh, uh, on top of buildings eh, over there. So, um, it has even is 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 a type of crane whereby it has its own pathway and it's guided by railways so it's like a big big train 
Yeah. And this thing can reclaim up to 1,250 tons of coal per hour. So yeah, the amount of uh, fuel needed to power up the, our coal power plants is tremendous. So I have, I have, I have observed uh, a big shipment of coal, just coal, 60,000 tons uh, back up in Perak last time. And they use it for one of their boilers. Only one, they have three at that time. Uh, the boiler is 700 megawatts. Uh, the, the boiler, the unit, I would say, uh, churns out 700 megawatts worth of electricity. So the boiler consumes that 60,000 tons of coal in just two weeks. Imagine, eh? 60,000 tons just like that. So imagine the amount of, you go a bit about environmental way here, the amount of carbon dioxide that has been produced and emitted to the air in just two weeks. Apart from that, I deal with um, uh, boiler processes and more fire because I like fire. So this is a, a, a boiler, a, a moving grid boiler. It's a very conventional old school boiler. It's in palm oil mills. It's meant for uh, big, big chunks of fuel, not pulverized fuel. And in this case, this is the uh, empty fruit bunch from a palm oil. So it's part of a biomass power plant. It's a renewable energy. So as you can see, being thrown into, uh, mechanically being uh, fed into the furnace uh, floor, and there's fire around. Lah. This is a small boiler. Small boiler like around con emits only around twenty five tons of steam per per, per hour. This is uh, when you uh, create too much steam or you put in too much uh, fuel in, uh, you tend to create more heat. Uh, you, you tend to generate a lot more heat. And then you have to let go of the heat because uh, that's the limit of your system. So you have safety systems over here. So this is what the test that we do for our uh, uh, pressure relief uh, valves. So it's quite loud, it's very loud at the time. And this is actually steam. It's not smoke. It's actually water vapor. And this is superheated steam. And no, I'm sorry. This is, yes, this is superheated steam. Uh, partially saturated and superheated steam. Um, uh, you will realize that you learn, you've learned superheated and uh, saturated steam in thermodynamics. You have the long table can. Saturated steam, you realize that it creates vapor back. Superheated steam is up to a point is just dry. There's no, you, there's no droplets. You don't see any vapors. Is so that superheated steam? So up to a point doesn't have any. Uh, it is is more is water, but. Uh, up to a point, it goes beyond that, so it's just purely a gaseous state. Yeah, and it's very very hot, and for it to be superheated, it has to be at a certain uh, pressure lah. So the moment it goes out into normal uh, environment, it will then condense back and then become saturated, and then you can see the water vapor lah. Yeah. So um. So up till now, that's basically what I've done so far for my previous job. My current job is uh, more of project management. So I, I don't deal with uh, thermal power plants much. It's business development. I deal more on the business side. And then I deal more on the, how to say, uh, the, the overall process of things. So, yeah. So, uh, next is uh, a little bit of life advice from me. Focus on the things that make you great and content. That can make you go further, can make you yeah, be a, a specialist in that, and make you content. Content is better than happy, for in my opinion. And then the only constant in life is change. People change, you change, everything changes the past couple of years. Uh, the world has changed uh, tremendously. 
by right, I'm supposed to, uh, if, if this were to be an industrial lec uh, invitation lecture, I have to go all the way up to police where you guys are, where you guys will be in class. But you guys are now in front of laptops and whatnot. And then I am here in my shorts drinking coffee. And life is uncertain. Yes, you have no idea what's going to happen in front of you. The only thing that is certain is death. And another thing that is another thing uh, that and there is another thing that is certain is tax. Okay, so those two things, death and taxes, that's certain. So see the world, learn as much as you can, and travel as far as you can be. Uh, because uh, for me, I'm uh, I, I tend to I love to travel. I love to. It's in my uh, blood lah, my heredity. So my ancestors actually we are from one place to another, and we like to just move about. So uh, how much I love traveling, how much I really desire to go out. When I was studying in uh, in in Unit Ten, I would like to be envious of Dr. Anas. It's like, yeah, man, he's in US, and I'm stuck in Malaysia. Damn, sucks. But then, no, you you can still you can still travel. Uh, still, they have the desire to travel, and how much I desire to tra to travel. Uh, my work, I choose the work that makes me travel. So because of that, like uh, at its peak before COVID. I travel twice uh, a month to Indonesia, whereby each trip goes as long as one week. So imagine how the month I got Indonesia, and then I work there uh, because I got a project there. And then uh, I never been to Indonesia until 2016. Huh. Imagine I've been to all the countries in Southeast Asia except Myanmar, and never been to Indonesia and up till now, Indonesia is the most visited country by me uh, than any other countries because of work. So if you if you if you have something that you like doing as a hobby, try and find work that can somewhat complement it. For me, I like traveling. I like eating. So whenever I travel, I'll try and Google up places it's like, hey, where's a nice place for me to eat? Ah, so after work, I can stop by and have a good. Uh, good drink, uh, good view of uh, somewhere to eat, uh, so something like that. So yeah, and then you learn a lot by by seeing the way you learn perspective of a human being because everywhere is different. And then you uh, being a little bit more environmental here is you take care of the earth. Uh, you won't see it like this today, next twenty years. So for you to retain it to be today, a lot of effort needs to be done. Hence why I am in synergy. So, um, uh, but don't get me wrong. Even though I go into coal power plants and whatnot, I tell you, the coal power plant engineers, uh, they are the most efficient. They are the most environmental conscious. One of them. Yeah, they their life actually. They say, oh, okay, we they try not to reduce waste. Uh, I did. They, sorry. They try their best to reduce waste. They recycle their waste. They they handle and manage their life. Um, they go with all the works. Uh, they revolve on the words of efficiency because uh, for them, uh, an efficient power plant is uh, is a is a very good power plant. It's a clean one, and then everyone's happy. Their life's happy. So they try their best to make sure that it's as efficient, and they try their best. It's like uh because uh when you deal with coal you deal with a lot of uh ash and you deal with a lot of uh, emissions so they they look at this uh, in in great detail it's like oh this time around the uh sulfur content is a bit high for this particular coal so we uh, uh, put up a notch for the filter it's called a flue gas desulfurizer fgd so yeah they, they, they're quite they're, they're very very um uh environmental conscious yeah and so you have to put a lot of effort next 20 years at least next 10 years uh 2030 uh that's what a lot of people's targets 2030 2050 uh don't just be a hot air just shout it out aloud but nothing is done and don't just talk and no action like a lot of um, 
what things are doing. Be efficient. Be as efficient as you can. And I tell you why um, uh, I want to share with you um, why a, a Japanese are very efficient lots. Yeah. Um, because according to my brother who worked in a Japanese company before, they are uh, a, a very, a, a bunch of, I would say, lazy people. <laughs> That's pretty much blunt, isn't it? Uh, but then being lazy, they start to think, I'm lazy to do all this stuff. Uh, can we create a process that can uh, ease that thing? Or can we create something that can actually assist us doing that thing? So they start moving their brains. And from there on, it becomes efficient. So uh, don't, don't, don't put my word to it. But sometimes being lazy is part of the prerequisite to be efficient. But, but don't do it, okay? Don't, don't be lazy, okay? Just be efficient. Learn and start to use your, 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 your beautiful mind. Start to think, it's like, how do I improve the process? Yeah. And then yes, delay gratification is the basis to your goals. So sometimes don't, don't splurge. Don't go with that particular drink, uh, the expensive one or the, the good view. You might be a hustle, you might be on the ground, you might be in the mud. You might be in a very deep mud. You can't see the sun, uh, sometimes like that. Uh, but you know where you are and you know where you're going. So you stick to it. Yeah. So, uh, right, I would like to stop my sharing, but I would like to actually, uh, how to say, uh, go for a question and answer session. Yeah. Okay, yes, please. Um, so, um, I would like to have a few questions from the students. I think please use this opportunity to ask hard and tough questions uh, to Mr. Azmil, please. Anyone? Uh, okay, uh, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, my name is Muhammad Aslam. So, I got one question. Uh, uh, Azmil, okay, uh, what is the mistake that you have done and your and in your past and you don't want that next generation to repeat it i mean in terms of engine, uh, engineer in engineering fields like uh, oh i should have done this um, i should have known this okay thank you okay a uh, good question and uh of course there's a lot of mistakes that we've done in the past uh, breaking things is one of it okay and breaking things is not the biggest thing. The, that's not the biggest mistake. Unless you break a power plant, ah, yeah, yeah. You you better stop. You better start running lah. But you can't break a power plant because it is designed. Uh, if there is something wrong about it or or, or something wrong with it, uh, it'll just decided to trip. Meaning trip means stop. And then uh, it's a fail safe thing lah. So uh, in this case, uh, mistakes is. The biggest mistake is actually repeating it. Yeah. So uh, uh, it is uh, even it's a small mistake. Um, even if it is uh, uh, a design um, design mistake, it's not about technicals. The biggest mistake apparently in engineering is not about uh, a technical mistake. Uh, is actually about. Uh, a personal or human error uh, in HSE term, health and safety and, or environment uh, term, uh, means negligence. That's part of negligence. Uh, negligence, why become negligence? Is a part of our decision to, uh, to go with that and um, to overlook uh, something. So in, in my, in my experience is allowing myself to make the same mistakes over again um so that's what uh, it's a simple one it's a simple mistake um but uh it can be proof costly to some others so this is uh, my advice to everyone 
and be you want to become an engineer or later on become a boss whatsoever if you want to make mistakes go ahead and make mistakes especially now when you guys are still young go ahead and make as many mistakes that means you guys are trying but it won't be a mistake if you document it so it can be research you have to document it it's like uh, let's experiment how do i actually uh let's see how does this thing works or how does this thing burn up you try it out and you document it lah yeah documenting it can be like a mental note or you put it down or videotape it we record it i mean so um allowing a mistake more than once uh sometimes it's like okay you make a mistake once you learn uh because you don't know you make the second mistake is because um you feel that i i think you are right but you're proven wrong again by the time you make the third mistake is more of a decision you decided to make that mistake just don't learn so that's one one thing uh i can give you all yeah next okay thank you so i can i ask you a question yes yes so my name is matthew i have a question of uh, how often do you do maintenance in the power plant and roughly how much is the cost of every maintenance okay mm, depends all right um let's go with because let's go with uh uh a biogas power plant a biogas power plant is is small it's rather small compared to utility scale power plant um utility scale power plant is like 700 megawatts per unit and there's three of them that's the one you can wikipedia it is uh, you can google it you see manjo and there's one big one 1000 megawatts coal power plants and whatnot so you have we call it um outages whereby the unit has to be uh, turned off or shut down for maintenance and there's also uh, there's plan out uh, plan outages and unplanned uh, uh, outages uh, force outages unforced unforced is basically you plan out lah you don't force it you plan it out force outages is something that is corrective and then um, you had to deal with it there and then so you have to force it to to turn it off um, and there's also um, maintenance where you can do it along in between and that's for coal power plants uh, same goes for anything um, it's just like uh, maintaining your car the concept there are minor services yep minor services you just uh, uh, replace certain things uh, for example like uh, lube oil or uh, you service the the blowers or the 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 nozzles and whatnot you have a look into the the, the steam turbine that's it and then the um, semi major or in my biogas part uh, there's um, uh, biogas power plant basically that uh, 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 there are four types maybe two types of minor and two types of major the two types of uh, major is uh, is at um the top overhaul for the gas engine and uh, then the next one is the top and bottom overhaul and it's just like a car engine and depending on how you utilize the maintenance and the condition how you operate it and then the 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 fuel that you use okay so um same goes for every single uh, power plants refineries so it all depends on to that uh, the design of the fuel design of the power plant how you use it how you operate it so sometimes if you operate it very very well the fuel is just some premium stuff so you don't need to be very frequent in servicing it uh, the service uh, vendor or specialist come over is like ah no need lah but usually they they, they go with uh, hours the uh, running hours so your uptime is based on running hours they clock it and get okay sekarang it's already 2000 hours okay we'll do a minor service and then it it goes on every 2000 hours it takes only one day eight hours to be exact it's just like changing the 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 the, the engine lube oil and that's it 
and you along in between you check on a few other things uh, in the in the in the systems lah. Okay. And then uh, later on, like to the uh, yes, we have a limitation on the time, so ah, yes. two or three more questions. Uh, two of them are in the chat box, so I'm yes. going to read the question for you. Uh, what will happen to the whole uh, steam power plant if it is shut down for one day? What will be the consequences? Wait, 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 wait. In the chat box. Good job, good job. Okay, chat. Yes, found it. All right. Uh, I will see what will happen if the whole steam power plant shut down for one day. What will be the consequence? Well, we uh, people we just lose business. Uh, because uh, generation is really simple. Uh, power plants are meant to be reliable and then if it's unplanned uh, you lose the revenue and generation for that day and for utility scale power plant for example uh, uh, coal power plant they punya tariff the, the the selling tariff is for example like 30 cents let's go with 30 cents we, we do a simple calculation and then uh, calculation is 0 0.30 yeah 0 0.30 times uh, 1000 megawatts for example that's 1000 but we go with the kilowatt hours times another 1000 uh, and then times uh, because uh, the rate is uh, 30 cents per kilowatt hour so you have the times in this case 24 hours for a day so you lose out 7 million okay that's the amount of money that you lose but from that you have to repair the equipment so it costs more so time is money yes it really is so if, let's say a power plant is not operated properly i as an asset manager in the office i'll be shouting from uh, to the operators what is happening okay uh, macam tu. interesting okay, second yes. question from yusmi yeah okay i read it out uh, some uh, doctor and mr and my question is oh you know uh uh engines are all measured from men so you Women be or girl be a part of it as everyone said that if you're a woman, sometimes it's hard for a company to hire. So how do we uh, take the opinion? I say that is bullshit. Like, nowadays, the real world, of course, there is a glass ceiling, but you have to take up the challenge. Sometimes um, men is like, hey, can you go to the ground? Can you do all these work and whatnot? You just say yes. It's like, yeah, why not? I have friends who are in uh, oil and gas industry, Schlumberger, Shell, uh, Petronas, yes, um, the, 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 our, uh, the big, big ones, big, big Hughes and whatnot, okay, women, ladies, female, and they are all there on the oil rig, on the platforms, uh, they are out there, it's like, I have, um, I have a friend, um, uh, a school friend, she's in, I'm not so sure whether she's still now in Islam as a geologist. Uh, she has a Russian friend, lady, and is like a supermodel. I was like, what the hell, man? Is she really is an engineer. It's like she's tall and she she's beautiful. And then uh, she saw she gave she she, she uh, showed me pictures of her in the field. I was like, you can do work. Respect. Yes, they can do. You what you need to do is you don't um, of course for you to uh, be best you have in a way that actually is the same as men you have to stand out and for you to stand out is for you to volunteer and you have to be ready to use your hands and to uh, to get your hands all oiled up and whatnot so you have to be ready to do that um, like I said my friend. Uh, who is way better than me in terms of competency. She's an IR and whatnot, but same time she's a mother, she plays futsal and everything else. Uh, what she does is uh, she's focused with her work. And generally people, the engineers, um, uh, like TNB and whatsoever is like, we don't we don't give a damn you're a woman or a man, all we know is you got work, this is your job scope, you do your work. Done deal. That's all we care. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Azmin. To the next questions. We got three last one, okay? Uh, because we are uh, against time right now. All right. So, from Amar. Okay. Power plants, power plants yeah. solve energy problem. Exergy problem. This is very technical. Yes. Uh, combined cycle power plants. 
uh, the biogas power plant that you see is mostly are uh, open cycles. Gas turbines are open cycles. Combine cycle, uh, combine cycle power plants. Yeah, you can improve, but basically, uh, from um, how to say, yeah, a combine cycle is pretty much pretty direct, and then from there, and you harness the heat from there, and apparently, uh, the XCG will increase actually. You don't solve it. Uh, what you do is uh, you try and control it by segmentizing it instead. So uh, what actually, uh, however, the problem over here actually will increase, but combined cycle power plants will increase its efficiency because you harness energy. Uh, you don't waste it. Like open cycle, the exhaust from a gas turbine is like around 500, 600 degrees Celsius where and it's a uh, high flow high volume flow rate so that's a lot of potential that you can utilize so you utilize that yeah okay other than coal power plants uh we have gas uh so okay uh do 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 a little bit of homework on this one uh on your for yourself um uh, we have this uh the 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 elective uh uh the elective subject power generation also can help on this you have base load power plants you have intermediary power plant and then we have the peak load so the base load is where um to cater all the the the, the minimum load that is the minimum demand that is in Malaysia, for example so power plants like coal power plants is reliable uh they're in a way cheap and they they can go on turn on for like months without turning off peak loads are like gas turbines they can turn off just like that and it caters to the uh, daily peak demand so usually in the afternoon everyone's hot people turn on their icons that's where the demand peaks so yes so uh there's a mixture in malaysia where majority i think 60 percent is around coal because of that so do have a look into that. Boleh. And next one is Assalamualaikum Sir Azmil. My question is in order for power plant to operate, how many worker do they need? How many engineers, creator, technician, engineers? Depends. Assalamualaikum uh, Salam. My biogas power plant only lap, only eight. I only have eight power uh, eight whereby during daytime there is a plant head and there's a system plant head. Uh, and then uh, every shift, there are three shifts in a day, uh, operating at eight hours due to uh, human resource labor labor loss, eight hours a day. So each of the shift only two persons, because it's a small power plant, and the rest is automated. The same goes for uh, utility scale power plants. You don't have much, uh, you don't have to be big. Uh, around uh, for a, uh, let's go with Manjong lah around 2100 megawatt power plant uh, of three units you only have uh, at one time 200 people at one time i think that is the stuff uh, there'll be some additional around 200 people uh, contract workers and whatnot so you, depending on how, how big the power plant is how well automated the power plant will be and how much uh uh the, the, okay now the 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 thing about manpower is now is people are going more efficient and efficient people want automation people want reliability and whatnot apparently uh human intervention creates inefficiencies ouch yes but um so our outlook into here is in the future we want to optimize things uh we want to have more uh, reliable systems power plants are automated mostly uh because at certain times uh the, the air fuel ratio they can just do it on their own but sometimes we have to have human intervention just in case to calibrate things or to for troubleshooting but um the the future of power plants is um uh, we do want to actually go uh, uh less reliant on two people so from there actually in a business scale we'll be more uh, reliable more efficient and these people are about how to become a specialist in that particular operation. So, yeah. Okay, last one from Joshua, Mr. Azmir. 
good afternoon sir do you think malaysia has the technical capability resources to support nuclear power plant yes of course we have a friend over here um our friend uh, dr anas and my friend called uh, dr mahadi so he is a very very bright genius uh, in terms of material science and he graduated uh, from oxford or university uh, he got his phd from oxford yeah yeah he has an ir he graduated from oxford and uh, as an engineer also he is also just as crazy as us okay so even though you're an oxford uh, graduate no okay you're just an engineer at the end yes we have the the, the capabilities the only capabilities that we don't have a problem is uh is more of the security the national security uh, at hand uh, the commercial uh, capability or feasibility, commercial feasibility of the power plant. At the end of the day, people want cheap power. I don't want to pay uh, an additional 200 ringgit a month because we are supporting nuclear. Go figure. And then also at the same time, um, is about uh, since we are talking about uh, power availability, uh, natural power, uh, uh, cheap power and whatnot, uh, we tend to harness something that uh, or of resources that is actually readily or easily available to us. So now the focus is we are going to phase out power, coal power plants, gas power plants. We are going to renewable something that is more sustainable uh, and more, uh, I would say, uh, where everyone is going into. Nuclear, I, I, my, in my opinion, is a good, is a good one. Uh, if you go with deal with um, uh, power plant operators and whatnot, they are all efficient and they, they they focus on safety. So no issues about being that thing being not operated uh, properly. It will be operated properly. No issues. If Mr. Smith, one last question from me. Yes. Uh, okay. So we talk about the power plants, and then you mentioned itself the coal power plants. They are very cheap, but the impact on the environment is quite uh, severe. I would say. Okay, so the government uh, through the SDG uh, and commitment via COP26 as well as uh, from the 12 Malaysian plan, um, they are committed in reducing uh, the carbon emission by 45% in 2030 and a further 60% in 2035 <laughs> compared to 2005 level. Uh, from the statement, I would say that it is quite an ambitious target. So what do you think? Is it possible for us to achieve the carbon uh, emission or to in reducing the carbon emission as stated by the government? What do you think? Okay. Uh, okay. Well, number one thing is uh, coal power plants, uh, how efficient, um, they are efficient and they are, coal is basically, uh, they emit a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, hazardous emission, just like gas, just like even biogas, all right? But then what coal power plant is designed all the way it is up to a point that they uh, filter uh, their emissions up to 95%. So all the coal ash, all the, uh, the hazardous gas like sulfur, like nit nitrogen and everything else is filtered out up to a point there even um, flue gas desulfurizer or electric, uh, the ESP, electric, uh, precipitate, uh, electric uh, static precipitator. So it basically, it filters out 95 to 98%. So it's up to a point, it's negligible emissions. However, the carbon dioxide, the molecular level, yes, it is still uh, is desired to be, um, uh, to be taken. Carbon sequestration, uh, Carbon sequestration is a big deal for coal power plants, as well as oil and gas, and as well as logistics. So what people are doing right now is, um, uh, number one, reduce the reliance on two power. So this is where everyone comes into play. Uh, we go with the low lying fruit, which is improve your energy efficiency initiatives. Uh, instead of the normal uh, light bulbs, you go with the LED light bulbs. A, so up to a point that you can actually save up to 30% of your electricity bill and electricity consumption just by improving the uh, installation, the mechanical items, which is very easy to do. 
uh, another 10 to 15 percent actually on how you uh, use your electricity items and then also on uh, apart from that is actually on improving the system uh, this is in, uh, improving the uh, physical changing the whole lot this is uh, changing the operation how you practice it and then this is changing the system of the physical item so making more efficient so that's number one number two is uh, people nowadays are talking about decarbonization so companies this is a corporate thing also but um, companies they are looking into ways to decarbonize their assets uh, there's a carbon footprint um, formulas and whatnot so you can actually um, actually how to say compute and determine how much carbon footprint or carbon life cycle this power plant is going to uh, generate and from there that's your target to reduce it and how you reduce it you do by means of several ways of you offset it somewhere else okay uh, very crude orthodox way is to plant trees but actually there are ways to other ways to do so for example like um, invest into uh, sustainable or renewable energy and then the country uh, they are focusing to sustainable and renewable energy initiatives and then at the same time um, they are phasing out they uh, have the intention to phase out coal power plants lah. okay um, i am upbeat and uh, coal, apart from coal power plants, palm oil industry uh, is one of the biggest contributors. So uh, the carbon dioxide is not uh, is not a big thing compared to if methane emission. Methane is 21, 21 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So this is where synergy comes into play. We cover up all these palm oil effluents where they emit a lot of, uh, how to say, all this methane. And then we use the methane to a to useful use by chugging it into our biogas engine and then burn it. So waste, instead of throwing it into the air, we put it inside a gas engine. Of course, we still produce carbon dioxide, but it is uh, we we uh, soften the impact to the environment. And at the same time, uh, we create, uh, we generate electricity for us to be less reliant on two fossil fuels. Thank you so much, Mr. Azmi, for your answer. Um, so I think with that, uh, we conclude our lecture. So again, thank you, Mr. Azmi, uh, for such an insightful and informative lecture. And I believe what was covered uh, in this lecture definitely supplement the contents that was covered in uh, our syllabus in GDMM. And I believe there are so many takeaways uh, from this session. So I'm just going to highlight a few of them. Uh, basically, how we can relate what we have learned in the class and basically implement it to the industry and Mr. Azmi explain it in details. And what is important basically in a working environment is the character as highlighted uh, just now. And I think um, you might not understand most of the things that you're learning right now. I think that's the, the sentence that you start to use just now. We might not understand what we are learning right now, but uh, what we are learning right now basically will give the foundation when we start working. I think that's important. So <coughs> learn as much as you can. And uh, other than that, it's very important uh, as well to understand uh, the synergy or the relationship is, uh, between good pay versus great job experience and wonderful employer as shared by Mr. Azmail. And uh, I think one of the important takeaway is about mistakes. Uh, we, we cannot run from mistakes. We do mistakes. But it's important for us to learn from that. So document your mistakes and make sure not to repeat them. Okay. And finally, um, regardless whether we are men or women, it's important for us as engineer to get our hands dirty. Uh, that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter the gender because I think nowadays in 2021, yes, the glass ceiling is still there, but it's not as obvious or as um, as bad as maybe 15, 20 years ago. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, we have come to the end of the lecture uh, and I would like to express why uh, my warmest thanks to our invited speaker, Mr. Azmil, for his time and insightful sharing session. And I thank you uh, for students as well, for your participation, for the uh, amazing questions being asked. And I hope this session has given a positive impression and outlook on what it is like working in the power plants related fields. 
So I think that's all for today. Uh, thank you everyone, especially to our invited speaker and to all students. And by the way, don't forget students, uh, you still have to fill up your attendance and have a very good midterm break next week. So again, thank you very much, Mr. Asmel. All right, I hope to, to see you again soon. All okay. Right. Thank you everyone for uh, receiving my lecture. It might be a little bit boring at some time, but uh, I hope you can learn a thing or two. Uh, yes, go ahead, enjoy your life, focus on your uh, your thing. And then this is a part where of uh, you're in the level of uh, thermodynamics or in the in the level of your 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 semester or uh, your your uh, how to say your your bachelor's degree that you the only way is to move forward and proceed. Yeah. So hope to see you all uh, on the field soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a very good weekend. Assalamu alaikum and very good day. Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you, Dr.